Hello and welcome to the Truth Within podcast, where we will be sharing precious teachings and divine feminine wisdom that's being remembered for our time. I'm your host, Joe Yule, and each week I will be in conversation with Dee Delaney, author of the Truth Within trilogy. In this week's podcast, we are delving a little bit deeper into our belief systems and asking, is it really necessary to suffer as we walk our path to peace? You can subscribe to our podcast through sacredstoriesmedia.com or search The Truth Within on iTunes. Connect directly with Dee via her website at ddelaney.co.uk and you can follow me, Joe Yule, on at Reset Rebel Productions on Instagram. Head to my website if you're interested in creating your own podcasts. I produce creative audio for brands, businesses and also provide digital content across the board. Now, we are back. Dee Delaney, here we are on your wonderful balcony here in Ibiza. Hi, Joe. Such a pleasure to be surrounded by this um, beautiful bird song, um, tweeting merrily away as a, a little accompaniment uh, to today's episode, which is a little light relief, really, because today we're talking about suffering, <laughs> as you do. It's a curious one, really, and there's no denying, Dee, um, that you have suffered greatly to get where you are now. Um, it's quite a miracle that you're really even sitting here beside me and not lying on the floor um, in a big heap. Uh, it's also, I think, quite fair to say um, that most religious speak of suffering is just, it's a necessary part of our evolution. And I think that the foundation of Buddhism is the truth of suffering, the truth of the cause of the suffering and the truth of the end of the suffering. And of course, the truth of the path that leads to the end of the suffering. Um, So Buddhism, as far as I've experienced, is a very peaceful system. Um, But it sounds like there is a lot of suffering in these four truths. Um, And that is the theme for today's podcast. So how, how can you say that you don't need to suffer when it's clear that suffering is fundamental for our growth? Yeah, it's true, hi. Huh? And it is curious, this this whole notion of suffering. And yes, there's no denying from my story that I've suffered greatly, which is why I can speak about suffering with such clarity, because I've done a lot of work <laughs> to release the story of suffering from one of my beliefs. And it's a belief. It's a belief. So we go back a bit every spiritual leader that I know that's ever graced this world has said the same thing that before you can rise you have to go into your own pain and your own suffering and this notion of compulsory suffering to evolve as a being of light has always has always sat uncomfortably me with me really I've really struggled with it since I started to heal and I remember speaking to a therapist five years ago and saying to her but I don't understand why why do we have to suffer we don't get it and all of our systems for understanding the heart and mind from east and west to philosophical theological and scientific they all say the same thing that you have to go into the light sorry you have to go into the dark to come out of the light you see that's Freud in her <laughs> <laughs> I wish that was so true I was kind of getting a bit hopeful there yeah but this is my point but and this is my point because something so deep inside me knows there's got to be a better way there has to be a better way and my soul feels that there is a kinder, gentler, a more nurturing way to find peace, a more feminine way. And I believe this comes when we drop the story of suffering. I think when we collectively say no more, that we will find a profound peace on earth. Absolutely. But I think, you know, talking about dropping the suffering, I mean, it's, a, you know, as usual, it's a, it's a great concept and but how how do you drop the suffering I think that's you know if you drop the suffering you need to drop your religious and philosophical belief systems that say suffering is fundamental to the practice so I mean in Buddhism life is suffering in Christianity we're born with sin and in Islam um, we will be judged and in Judaism there's reward and punishment surely 
that is going to create massive uncertainty and even more terrible suffering to us all, in theory. Yeah, in theory, huh? But, and I think there will be tremendous uncertainty when we drop these belief systems. But there always is great uncertainty when we experience great change, isn't there? There's always some discomfort. And when we walk this path, we need to get comfortable with uncertainty because the world is shifting whether we like it or not. <laughs> you know, We cannot deny that since 2012, we've entered this new epoch of energy and it's kind of been labelled the time of the sick sun and it's brought with her luna, la luna energy, feminine energy and this feminine way of doing business is softer and more nurturing than the past 5,200 years of patriarchal energy it just is and we have to accept that and the first thing we need to understand is we've been living under these systems for thousands and thousands of years and when you put your hand on your heart and ask yourself you know are we happy what we see is that we've created more divide and separation in our world through these systems we've created more suffering i don't think anyone who's awake can really deny that and it's not about blame it just is so we have a choice to make we carry on and we ignore where we are and we go into more suffering or we can change the systems from the inside out and that means we have to start with ourselves because we are part of the system so in my story this meant I had to sit down and look at what was causing me story, the guilt and the shame, the jealousy and the anger. I had to look at where they came from and go back many, many past lives to understand the root cause. I had to go deeply into my belief systems and I had to start to reprogram myself from the inside out. That's the task we all need to do. So it feels like you're sort of a, yeah, a suffering robot that you have to rewire somehow, which um, I think is the test of our time, really. How do you reprogram yourself and, you know, reset? And it's it's difficult, you know. We know it's difficult. We know that it's just not going to happen at the flick of a switch or, you know, the changing of a bit of those uh, electrical neurons inside of us that kind of tell us how it is and you know we need to change that story and that's that's a choice that's choosing to feel and believe and be a certain way and I think you know I really wanted to punch the person in the face that told me you know feeling is a choice so I just didn't believe that for a really long time and I think that was a very powerful thing for me to understand that I was choosing to feel and allowing myself to feel a certain way and actually you know, there is a way to change the game. We all need to find our own individual way to do that. And that is very unique to each individual. And I think could take you a lifetime to work out what that is or how to get there. But I think the little bit of work that you've obviously personally done to stop this story of suffering being part of your life is something that maybe you could uh, shed a little light on exactly how you arrived there. Yeah, as you say, there are many, many layers and many ways There's no one right way. So I think we all need to find what's comfortable with us and start. It's the most important thing. And then this next most important thing, and it sounds obvious, but it's to love yourself daily. (laughs) Doesn't that sound so obvious? But it's most people don't spend five minutes in the morning or before they go to bed, and they don't bathe in their own essence. They don't take the time to love themselves. And it's really that simple, just to sit and surround yourself in your own love. Give yourself a great big, fat, juicy, cosmic hug. You know, that's, and then, and then let that love uh, penetrate every cell of your body. It's easy, huh? But we don't do it. So that's the next thing. 
then really, really take the time to get to know yourself, get to know what your beliefs are, write them down. You know, the act of writing energetically transmutes what is hidden in the subconscious mind, our feelings that we don't even know about half the time. When we put them onto paper, something happens. We kind of transmute what's within us and we get it out of our system. So it's really good just to journal. There's a thing called The Artist's Way, which is by Julia Cameron, and it's a fabulous thing. And it's basically the minute you wake up, don't even open your eyes, brush your teeth or anything. Just get a pen and paper and just download what's there. And that way, every day, even if it's just five minutes, you're transmuting anything that's deep within yourselves. The next is take responsibility for everything you say, do, feel and think. Own your life. It's yours and yours alone. Take responsibility for your stuff. Start to see the unconscious patternings that you keep repeating and make a decision to change. You know, do you own your life? And then forgive yourself. You know, uh, know that you will make mistakes and some beliefs are so deeply rooted in your psyche they might, as you say, take a lifetime to change. And that's okay. Next time, you'll do it quicker. <laughs> you will be coming back another time. So, you know, give yourself a break. You know, deep beliefs are like roots of trees. They hold on tight. So have the humility to forgive yourself and see your own faults. Do not criticize yourself. And we as women, we are classic at sort of... Uh, pulling ourselves apart and you know what it doesn't help anyone so stop it get it out of your your vocabulary and your system don't say you're fat or you're not clever or whatever it is you're having a bad head or whatever it is that's negative just stop doing it and you'll notice that you become the opposite of what you think you're not uh don't judge others you know it's an obvious one but we often judge others and what we need to learn ourselves you know what they need to learn is their stuff let them have it let them have it all don't take it on you've got enough to deal with yourself and don't compare yourself to others you know again just do you there's absolutely no benefit in comparing yourself to another person that's not your job your job is to do you so if we make these changes on a day-to-day -day basis, these are like the building blocks for living a life without suffering. Great building blocks. I think Bob the Builder would be proud. I think um, there's some great ones in there. I really um, yeah, do use most of those uh, daily, in fact, particularly the journaling one. It's um, I like to kind of wake up in the morning and leave the pen and paper by the side of my bed and just free flow before I actually touch my phone or do anything at all. And I find that really helpful to work out how I'm feeling before my day begins. And somehow when you've gotten to grips with where you're at before you engage with anything else, you're a little bit more able to change the game if necessary or just round off a few edges before uh, your day begins. And I think for me, that's just incredibly helpful and um just a nice way to observe. Um, I think comparing yourself to others as well particularly um, resonates with me because I think, you know, in the world of social media, doing the job that I do um, with all of this podcasting stuff and, you know, radio work and there is a lot of, you know, even as a yoga teacher actually, there's a lot of engagement on social media and in my mind necessity to use it as a marketing tool for the projects that I'm involved in and, you know, before you know it, you're scrolling down the pages and, you know, you can get lost for hours on there. And that is really unhelpful. And I notice that I am utterly, utterly miserable when I come off of Instagram after a big, you know, wade into the abyss of other people's 
apparently and seemingly perfect lives because then um, we all know that you know no one posts the misery or the pain or the suffering or the stuff they're going through it's just all a ridiculous portrayal of like how perfect life is so you know obviously I do follow people that are a bit more real and helpful in terms of the things that they share um but I think I hate myself when I catch myself criticizing myself in the aftermath of one of those really deep wasted periods of time on social media because I just feel yeah just feel really empty and lost and like my life's a big old sack of potatoes which clearly it isn't I live in Ibiza I'm a very lucky girl and I'm very grateful for it you know most of the time but I just wonder what life might actually look for if we were a little bit more grateful for what we've got and if we could really stop um, comparing and contrasting because we you know it's just the most ridiculous thing that just causes us so much upset. Yeah, it's true, isn't it? And I, I'm way off <laughs> eradicating all my belief systems. And, uh, you know, I, 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 I share your feelings with social media. Um, I struggle with it too. But I think all we can do is learn about ourselves and the patterns that define us each and every day. And the more we learn, the less we beat ourselves up. You know, that's fundamental. I'm, I'm much better now at forgiving myself. And the more I observe, the more I catch myself and the pattern in the moment. And it's like, there used to be like a, a two or three week delay. And I'd go, ah, oh, I did that. Now it, it's becoming more instantaneous. and then you don't react so and you don't control life and you step into the flow and as we've talked about everything becomes life just becomes infinitely richer and uh the things that we can achieve you know we can achieve so many more things than we ever imagined but i think letting go of expectations is quite a big one you know we, you know, we've had so, I, I've grown up with so many expectations of what life should be. And um, that has no place in this new world. So when we let go of the belief systems of patriarchy and separation, fear and anger, these systems are all becoming a thing of the past. And this is, I really want to say this is where we're stepping into this new earth where we just flow and be and we don't put all this stuff on ourselves and then a bit like a baby a bit like a child you know like a little baby they're always giggling and happy and they because they're totally in the flow they don't have all this conditioning yet and they're smiling and that that's how we should be I kind of have this thing about I'm getting younger, I'm getting younger because I want to get more to that childlike enthusiasm for life, that openness for life. And it's within all of our divine DNA. We all have this gift within us. You know, when we walk the talk and do the things that bring us joy, we start to live our soul purpose and this is the profound truth that our children our fut- and future generations are discovering. So this old paradigm of suffering as a pathway to peace no longer needs to be. And a new pathway through love can prevail. I think, yeah, exactly what you've just said, that this idea of getting younger is um, is a really lovely one. And I think to be more playful and to do the things that recreate that feeling of youth and being able to tap into that flow when we're in that kind of state and that unconscious kind of sense of being in ourselves where we are just joyously like a small child and I think you know that's one of the reasons I live in Ibiza is because I can go out dancing whenever I want and that's the one thing that really brings on that kind of playtime sensation for me and I think playtime is something that we lost along the way and that real ability to lose our sense of suffering through those pastimes that really bring out that sense of joy so I think I don't know I feel like it's time like we're sitting on this great bridge um, between 
old and new and we just have to keep walking and trusting and believing in this change don't we yeah we sure do but the thing is joe we are the bridge we are the bridge and as soon as we realize we have everything we need inside ourselves to make the changes necessary to drop our stories and live the best life possible then we can go on and get out and do the work we have to drop the stories love ourselves and take full responsibility for all that we say, do, think and feel. That's it. It really is quite simple. (laughs) I think, yeah, how many times have we said on this podcast, oh, it's quite easy, really. You know, just need to uh, tune in to what we're saying. (laughs) Oh, dear. It's, yeah, it can be simple, but it can also be very, very challenging, as we've mentioned, yeah, many, many times. And I, you know, I hope some of this podcast is resonating with people and that they're kind of maybe finding some little nuggets of uh, of wisdom in there somewhere that are, help, are helpful um, to try um, to drop those stories. And I think loving ourselves and taking responsibility for all of our actions and words, yeah, it's it's a tricky one. But I think, you know, some really nice things on there to enable people and empower them maybe to to love themselves that little bit more and I love this idea of getting up in the morning and sitting for five minutes you know morning lunch and evening like your son does as well and just shrouding ourselves in this blanket and um yeah this mist of red love and joy and hope I think on that note um you know is there a little message that maybe you'd like to leave our listeners with today Yeah, so please know that the alchemy of suffering is not what it seems. It's an invitation to step into the heart and live your dreams. I think I'm going to take you up on that invitation. So thank you again to our wonderful listeners for tuning in today. You can find the Truth Within podcast at sacredstoriesmedia.com on iTunes or from your favourite podcast provider, whoever that might be. And you can connect with Dee via her social media pages as well on Instagram and Facebook at ddelaney01 and find out about her books on her website as well. That's www.ddelaney.co. Dot UK or connect with me, Joe Yule, via my podcast and creative audio services at resetrebelproductions.com. Big love. Until next time. Can't wait. Mm-hmm.